Chapter 5 First Impressions The wet grass swung with the rain, tickling Michael where he sat, panting with his hands splayed behind him. The eye continued staring at him. It had an angry appearance due to its straight-edged, four-sided shape, but apart from that, it stayed motionless, unblinking, dead. Michael shook his head and cursed, annoyed at getting panicky over a fake gaze. He wrestled himself out of the grass, scratching at his bare legs, and bent close to examine the object. The diamond-shaped eye was made from a panel of thick red glass, rainy tears sliding off the surface. A small light bulb, maybe more, was underneath the panel. The eye sat on its side, with its back slightly raised, at an angle that gave the impression of a frown, with neither eyebrow nor mouth needed. It was surrounded by thick black metal, raindrops pinging off the newly revealed rivets of welds. Armour. A black armoured object with an intimidating eye to match. Michael looked over the length of vines covering the eye's owner. Its body was about the length of two cars, but strangely enough, just the height of one. Almost shaped like a limo, except bulkier, and capable of taking a much bigger battering. Michael's eyes travelled to a thick, stocky tree branch protruding sideways from the top, strangled by a strand of vines. The black tree branch gulped water down its hollow inside. No. Trickling into the barrel of its cannon. A tank. This definitely wasn't Alliance technology, and unlikely a rebel weapon. The design was too unconventional. Possibly Balfarian tech? No one knew the full extent of weapons hidden away in their arsenal. Over here! Michael spun into a crouch, eyes searching through the rainfall for the voice's owner. Not there, you... Any gust could blow it out! He strained to catch the scraps of chatter over the pounding shower. It's out of the rain, isn't it? What more do you want? What I want is... Food that's not blown onto the ground. You see how much shit is on the floor? Quit your bickering and light the damn thing. We shouldn't waste more time than we have to. Male voices, coming from a half-crumbled skyscraper on the other side of the chasm. A light sparked behind a set of smashed-in sliding doors, accompanied by a brief flicker of shadows. They were sheltering inside the ground floor. The voices settled down, too quiet to hear. Michael stooped and began stalking through the rain, exposed back bent, calves aching from the awkward movement. These were the first people he had encountered in an otherwise abandoned city. Only an idiot would not take the utmost caution in approaching them. Still, he felt himself becoming excited at the prospect of finally meeting someone. Hopefully, they could provide him with supplies, shelter, and answers. Maybe they knew more about the tank. Most importantly, he would ask about the Alliance and see if they were close by. If there was anyone who could help him find his brother's killer, it was them. He reached for chasm and paused. No way of getting around it without a serious detour, and he wanted to reach the men as quickly as possible. Michael half lowered himself, half slid down the muddy bank, loose gravel nipping at his ankles. He moved too quickly and slipped on a slick patch of clay halfway tumbled into the brown water in what must have sounded like a mighty splash. He resurfaced his head with a gasp, lungs straining to heaping gulps of air. Freezing. Good thing the puddle wasn't too deep. Underwater, his first involuntary gasp could have been lethal. Rain thundered as it burst on the pool's surface around his head. No movement came from the other side of the chasm. His crash had gone unnoticed. At least the raucous downpour had done him one favour today. He began to rise, body shaking, too numb to feel anything other than cold. Michael hoped the open sewer pipe on either side of him was thoroughly disused, as he pulled out of the sludge, sucking at his legs, one hand digging into the wet dirt after the other. He dragged himself out of the pit and clambered onto the other side, relieved to be on solid tarmac again. Mud was trapped under his fingernails, dripping from his skin, sticking firm to his legs and the ruined jacket around his waist. He used a dirty forearm to wipe away a thick layer of muck from his face, stinging his eyes. He must have looked a real state right then. Good thing there were no ladies in the area. Just him, a foul mood, and a set of gruff voices for company. Half crouching, 
half crawling. Michael struggled onwards, his empty stomach protesting at all the work he was putting it through. He reached the side of the sliding doors and crouched at their edge, thinking. A direct approach without a reconnaissance was a sure way to get himself in trouble. He started moving along the side of the building, looking for a side entrance into the men's nest. A thin trickle of smoke rose from the meagre pile of whitening charcoal, curling through the black, grime-crusted rack. Fenn eyed the tinfoil base, certain the flimsy material would give way at any minute. The three men had formed a tight circle within the breezy reception lobby, shielding the smouldering heap from occasional rainy gusts. Fenn scooched closer, hoping to warm his hands above the grill, but found scarcely enough heat left over for the six pale sausages, which were taking their sweet time to brown. His hands remained stubbornly cold and soggy, along with the rest of him. Rainwater continued to drip in sonorous taps onto his makeshift seat of overturned desk drawer. His two large khaki-coloured jackets lay draped over a dead stump of potted plant in the corner, having done little in terms of keeping him dry. At least he could stretch his back a bit, relieved from the weight of his weapon. A fallen wooden banner near the entrance to the room read, Valentine and Crockwell, advertising some lawyer service that used to inhabit the place. Not much use for legalities in this city nowadays. Besides, Fenn couldn't remember one positive thing lawyers had done for him, other than provide an easy profession to rant about. Their free blaster rifles were leaning against the sign, barrels up, water dribbling from the rounded top guards. They were all the same model, the BR-16, famously the world's most reliable blaster rifle. And amongst the cheapest too, which was why so many freelancers used one. Fenn wasn't very informed about guns, but even he knew how the BR-16 was named for the year it was first built. He'd always liked that. It showed the simplest of rifles were best suited to the simplest of names. Fenn glanced up, caught Coffee's eye from across the fire, who quickly looked away to scrutinise the sausages. With his hood off, Coffee revealed his afro-textured hairstyle, or simply short afro in Fenn's opinion. Coffee had leapt to his feet a couple minutes ago, when startled by the sound of debris falling into a puddle outside. He sat down again, grumbling, when he saw Fenn's amused expression. Fair enough that he and Bram were suspect, but being paranoid of someone lurking in this drenched city was sheer folly. All the city's survivors had either joined the freelancers in the fort, or fled long ago. Arminius favoured complete control over cohabitation with anyone else. A winning strategy until recently. Bram hadn't moved in the last few minutes, long face illuminated by the pale, ghostly light shining from his forearm, where his smart gauntlet was wrapped from elbow to wrist. He'd prized open the display screen on the outer body of the gauntlet, along its hinged line of tiny, interlinking segments, pushing the screen back from the curve of his arm to an upright position. The display was a touchscreen, and a light-up keyboard could also be summoned at the base of the newly exposed area of the gauntlet like when the keys revealed themselves on a freshly opened laptop. What is Bram doing on his gauntlet? Fenn couldn't tell as he faced the back of the opaque screen. Was he informing the fort of their progress, or plotting with his hollow cloak buddies? Maybe he was updating his social media account on whatever platform was popular nowadays. Fenn wouldn't know. He smiled at the thought of Bram uploading some ludicrous-looking selfies in the rain, coffee glaring behind him. Fenn glanced at his own forearm, where his black-faced watch with the broken minute hand ticked away, devoid of any gauntlet. The less contact options, the better. It was tiring enough keeping track of his own problems without tallying other people's. He slipped his hand into his pocket and pulled out the only device that should be kept close at hand. He began to unscrew the cap. Fen! Bram glared at him, gauntlet illuminating the deeply etched frown under his blonde hair. You know what Arminius said. Oh. My bad. Fenn paused, then continued to unscrew the hip flask. Coffee chuckled, a twinkle in his eye. Fenn, stop that right now. Bram kept his voice deadly low, like a scolding mother. If you return to the fort pissed, it'll be on all our heads. Pissed? Fenn asked, in feigned shock. What makes you think I'm drinking alcohol? The devil's drink. This is simply a refreshing flask of water. You don't expect me to drink that rainwater, do you? Who knows what's coming out of those filthy clouds? 
He took a long drink from the flask, the sweet flavours and harsh burn duetting a gentle melody in his fruit. You wouldn't stop a man from replenishing himself, would you? Fenn asked jollily, ignoring Bram's bared teeth as the scent of whiskey wafted from the flask. Or from refreshing his friends? He held out the flask. No, Coffee replied with a sour look. He suddenly let loose a smile, a wink, and a flourish as he whipped out his own hip flask. How could I take water from you when I brought my own to share? Their laughter slapped around the dank lobby. Who knew a steel breaker had some fire in him? Fenn joked as Coffee took a long swig from his own flask. Fenn took another drink and with eyes alone grinned at Bran over the top of his flask. Fenn stayed late most nights in the tavern and he'd noticed those who held a weakness for the place. Bram was not there all the time, but often enough to fall into the vice-quelling category. Fenn took yet another drink. Twelve-ounce hip flasks took a while to empty. You drink fast, Coffee commented. Tolerance is a bitch, trust me. I won't be getting drunk- Fenn stopped himself and glanced at Bram. I mean, I won't be getting more hydrated than you. Hydrated? Oh, oh yeah. Coffee chuckled with a wide smile. We'll have to see about that. My water's 45%. That didn't even make sense. Fenn gave an obligatory smile. At least Coffee was loosening up. Crap jokes were more tolerable than none. Bram cleared his throat. Perhaps. I, I mean, I forgot to bring my own water. Now I think about it. Fenn smiled, glancing at Bram's half-empty bottle on the floor. That was quicker than he expected, and he got to see Bram acting flustered for once. An unexpected reward. Michael sucked through clenched teeth, not daring to make a sound as Pian clawed the tear in his foot, steam gently hissing. He felt loose skin pull and close over the open wound where the glass had sliced him. The healing process was becoming less unbearable to suffer through, although he was still left weaker after each iteration. He resumed his slow walk, limbs weighing more with every step. The seemingly empty corridor proved quite the obstacle course. Sharp shafts of wood and jabbing stones lurking amongst the collapsed plaster coating the floor. Michael held up the latest culprit from its hiding place amongst a dust pile. The smooth shard of bloody glass reflected his darkened face. A mirror piece. A sharp peal of laughter bounded down the corridor. Michael quickly knelt. The group of men, he heard no womanly voices, was becoming louder, more excitable. They each had different accents, but Michael was relieved to hear scraps of his own language coming towards him from all the men. That meant the universal translator implanted within his ears still worked. UTs survived most temperatures and depths of water although he'd had a nagging worry that being frozen in the tank had broken it. How long could a UT survive like that? Not too long, surely. Michael looked back to the mirror shard, wiped the blood and dust from its reflective surface. Too dark to see anything in here, the reception lobby down the corridor would be brightened by whatever murky daylight the storm failed to halt. He needed to get a read on how trustworthy these men were before he approached them. Then again, Michael was not sure a stranger would count him as trustworthy, stalking through the dark corridor, leaving a lopsided set of blood-stained, muddy footprints in his wake. Fenn sucked through clenched teeth, keeping his annoyance in check as Bram took another drink. I remember offering Bram a sip, not half a flask. Ahem. <clears throat> Fenn coughed, holding out his hand. Bram glanced over mid-swig tilted the flask further back. Bram! Fem barked. He stopped himself from swearing at the thief. A drink too much amongst friends was one thing. There was no excuse when it came to potential adversaries. Bram lowered the flask and handed it back, avoiding eye contact. That's right, Bram. Ignore the man you're trying to take advantage of. Fen took a swig and mellowed out again. There was still plenty left for himself. Coffee can have more if he wants, but sod, Bram. You get what you give, and so far, Bram had provided no drink, and even less whimsy. Are the sausages ready yet? Coffee asked, interrupting Fenn's irksome thoughts. Bloody hope so, Fenn replied. 
I could eat a horse. A probably some horse in here. Coffee poked the tongs at the closest sausage, where a sliver of browned meat burst from the skin. I reckon I can see a hoof. You'd be lucky with horse, Bram suddenly said in an ominous voice. At this stage, I reckon we've got some human meat in there. Nice bit of thigh would taste better than the normal shit. So what's that meant to be? Fenn used a stick to give his own poke at a hardened slaver of gristle. Someone's wishbone. Wait, do humans have wishbones? Hmm, I wonder, Coffee mused, dramatically stroking his chin. If you cooked someone fat enough, would you get a layer of crackling? Like with pork? Fenn shuddered. He had smelt burning human before, and it wasn't too different from the sausages sizzling in front of him now. What was that? Fenn sluggishly turned his head towards the corridor behind Bram, trying to spot whatever had briefly shone from within its depths. I'm not that drunk, am I? Someone fat enough, eh? Only one way to find out, Bram said, looking over to Fenn with a smile. What are you getting at? Fenn asked, ignoring the corridor and placing a hand over his beer-swollen belly. This isn't fat, it's loose muscle. Ha! <laughs> And I'm the fucking elected general while we're at it. Hmm. You can have elected general, and I'll take the grand leader position. Hey, where does that leave me? Coffee asked. Oh, you're still the same, Coffee. Bram leaned forward, smiling. Only this time, we'll pretend you can shoot at a cruiser from two meters away and actually hit the fucking thing. I reckon that would be the biggest lie of them all. Fenn laughed, and Bram beamed at the positive reception. I enjoyed talking about the sausages more, Coffee sulked, taking another swig from his hip flask. Oh, I bet you did, Fenn said, winking. Coffee snorted mid-swig, vodka dribbling down his chin. Not like that? Do you think Baby Snatcher made one of those for us? Bram asked, lifting a dripping sausage from the grill and turning it over. Now it was Fenn's turn to snort up his drink. He'd forgotten who first started spreading that ridiculous nickname, but every time he thought of a waistcoat-clad man and his overly large briefcase, he couldn't help but laugh. That creepy bastard. I hope not. I'm surprised to hear one of his own clan using that name. Bram shrugged with a sly smile. Only outside the fort. Funny name for a weird man, although be careful. If he hears you calling him that, you'll be dead before you could finish your piss. Speaking of... Bram began to stand, his legs slightly buckled before he straightened himself, seemingly not caring if the others noticed. Then watched Bram stumble off towards the darkened corridor, aware he probably wasn't much more sober. Perhaps the man wasn't as bad as he'd first thought. Damn it. Then had forgotten how fickle he could be. He had to be careful. In this world, dishing out too much friendliness could prove lethal. Michael couldn't believe it. He shrank back into the shadows, taking the sliver of mirror he'd been holding around the corner with him. There were three of them, sitting next to the entrance. One dark-skinned man with an afro-textured hairstyle, an older man with a weird-fashioned white beard, and a third whose back faced him. Michael thought he'd been spotted at one point by the bearded man, but he'd been distracted. Distracted by the closest man's vile plan. These three men were cannibals? Clearly, this city was desolate, but were things really that bad? They even threatened to cook the old one, devouring the fat from his flesh. Like crackling. Was it a joke? What monster would joke about something like that? Michael placed a hand on the wall to steady himself as his stomach spun. His thoughts raced as the closest man stumbled towards his hiding spot. The men didn't look malnourished, eating enough to stay at a comfortable size. The bearded man was even flabby in the stomach area. Eating flesh to survive was one thing, but these three ate more than needed. Another staggered step. The tall man entered the corridor, groping his hand along the wall to regain his footing. Ah, fuck! The man lurched and grabbed a protruding edge of plaster to save his fall. Someone ought to... to clean this place up! Ha! Michael held his breath, a few paces away, crouching utterly still in the darkness. He needed to make up his mind. Should he reveal himself and trust his life to these villains, 
These bandits, whose guns were sitting ready in the next room? The men who walked through an abandoned city, armed and saturated with booze, preparing to eat humans. They'd also referred to a comrade who, from the sounds of it, stole innocent babies. Michael made a decision. These bandits were evil. Simple as that. And it had fallen upon him to purge that evil. He knew what was right, and his conscience wouldn't let him turn from the task. Michael took out the object next to the bracelet from his jacket pocket. The knife. The same he'd found on his brother's corpse. It was a hunting knife, a capitalised letter I intersected by a small circle engraved into the wooden handle. Its blade disturbed Michael the most. The rust told him it hadn't been properly cleaned. Not since stabbing someone and left bloody ever since. Lying under its victim's corpse. Who was to say one of these bandits hadn't been the wielder? An unzipping sound emanated from the darkness. Had he been spotted? Michael tensed, mid-crouch, and strained his eyes on the shadowed man blocking his way. The smell of sausages, human or not, tickled at his nose. Eat! Fucking hell! Did the man in front of him say that? He'd heard two completely different voices. A gushing sound. The man started releasing himself. He was pissing, and Michael swore as the stream hit his mud-splattered chest. What the fuck? He leapt forward. I think we're ready, Finn. Right you are. Hand me the buns. Buns? Buns, baps, bread, whatever it was you brought. A crashing sound came from the corridor. Stop falling over, you drunk idiot! Fen shouted. He turned back to coffee. You were meant to bring the sausage buns. I thought you were. Me? I brought the ammo. Me too, Coffee said, gesturing to their pile of bags, tucked into the driest corner of the room. No, I was meant to bring the ammo, and you were supposed to... Oh, gods. So not only did we both have to carry... I said shut up, Bram! Bram? The noise had multiplied into a series of thuds, each louder than the last. It sounded like Bram was repeatedly throwing himself against the wall. Was he trying to break it down? Or... Are you trying some weird sexual shit in there? Fen shouted. Coffee gave a one-syllable chuckle. It was weak. Nervous. The banging stopped, but soft noises continued from the darkness, almost inaudible over the thunderstorm outside. Was that a snarl? Coffee looked to the shadowy corridor, then back to Fen, eyes widening. Are you okay in there? Bram was likely to do many things, but succumbing to a thrashing fit in the corridor was not amongst them. Something wasn't right. He ought to run in, go to Bram's aid straight away, but some deep ingrained instinct of Fen's was whispering. Don't go into that corridor. Coffee. Grab the rifles. Coffee stood up, nodding his head vigorously. He didn't move from the spot. Coffee! Oh, me? I thought you were getting them. Now, you pissed fool! Coffee stumbled in a drunken arc to the entrance, arms spread wide like some absurd land bird. He bundled two of the large BR-16 rifles in his arms, metal clanging, plastic clacking. The noise coming from the corridor was getting quieter now. Fen didn't think that was a good thing. He felt the panic start to grip. Gods, when was the last time I panicked? This kind of thing didn't happen. Not anymore. Not here. Fen stood, swore as he swayed under the unexpected boozy wave. Coffee finally came back with the rifles, and Fen grabbed the nearest one. Pulled. It didn't budge. What the fuck? His eyes strained to see in the dim light. Coffee struggled with his own rifle from the other side. It's the straps! They've wrapped around each other! Shit! Fen hissed, fumbling fingers tugging at the shoulder straps. They stubbornly refused to come free from the jostling barrels, not helped by Coffee's yanking on the other side. Stop pulling and let me! A thump interrupted Fen. 
They both turned as a head flung itself into the light of the lobby, smacking the floor, its body concealed within the dark corridor. The head began to rise, revealing bloodshot eyes and purplish skin. A trickle of blood ran under the chin, seeping from the protruding knife handle. From Bram's neck. Bram looked up at Fenn, eyes distant, mouth hung. Fenn stayed glued to the spot, transfixed, as a thick, muddy arm came slivering out of the darkness and wrapped itself around Bram's neck. With a jerk, the head yanked back into the corridor. Coffee squealed. Fenn tugged his rifle towards him, swinging the other rifle and Coffee around with it until both their guns pointed down the corridor. Slap. Fenn slapped again, and on the third attempt, he found the button above the rifle's trigger. The torch attachment, jutting from the bottom of the rifle, flickered to life. Fenn gawked. Coffee squealed again. Bram's head had turned into a red hanging blotch, obscured by dirty dangling hair. His sagging body continued to spasm as muscle grips contracted in a way that reminded Fenn of a fish stranded on land, right after it had the life crushed out of it with a rock. A huge figure filled the corridor behind Bram, flickering in and out of the torchlight as it lumbered towards Fenn and Coffee. It held Bram's body by the neck, a makeshift shield coming towards them, doused in the stench of sewage and blood. Not only was the monster behind completely naked, but also covered in layers of dirt and grime. Fenn angled the torch, his eyes struggling to comprehend. The image appeared, vanished, reappeared again as Fenn's shaking hands struggled to keep the torch steady. Bram had already been a tall man, whom the monster matched in height, but while Bram was lean and lanky, the monster had a huge set of muscles to match his stature, filling the space. His muddy body gleamed when it swung under the beam of torchlight, pecs, biceps, and abdominals bulging and shining. Its face remained hidden behind Bram's, hair slicked down with shiny brown filth. Then, what do we do? Coffee's teeth clattered, and he nearly stumbled onto the barbecue as the monster and his corpse shield edged closer. The monster turned its head, opened its mouth to reveal a black hole, luminous white teeth shining within, half clearing its throat, half snarling. Coffee screamed. His high-pitched girlish wail reverberated around the room, bringing Fenn back to his senses. Why am I staring like this? He'd seen worse, survived worse. He hadn't gone through the horrors of the Apoc just to die at the hands of some mud-dweller. The monster was halfway across the room, and Fenn suddenly realised he and Coffee had slowly retreated to the other side. Screw Bram's dignity and death. It was time to save his own skin. Quiet, you devil! Fenn shouted. Coffee! Fire! He pulled his trigger at the same time as Coffee, and the conjoined guns leapt out of their arms, flung back by the recoil. Two black blaster shots soared through the lobby, hitting Bram in the chest and exploding on impact. Skin, ribcage, lungs, spine and blood all boiled and burst under the ferocious heat of the blaster shots, spitting fragments of human shrapnel around the room. The monster behind Bram yelled as the blaster shots left over power burned through and tore its chest apart. Fenn fell on his arse, bruising his left buttock on lumpy concrete. He covered his eyes and cursed, the black shimmering light of the blaster shot still dancing over his pupils. He always forgot how bright the weapons were, and how loud. Dust and a pink mist settled over the room, and the pattering echoes of rain seeped back into the lobby as the ringing noise of the blaster shots faded. Fenn's heart slowed as his senses recovered, reappearing from their foxhole to observe the damage. The smell of cooked flesh reached his nose, adding to the aroma of burning sausage. There was no need to panic any more. Monster or not, human shield or none, nobody could survive one, let alone two blaster shots to the chest at such close range. A cough shot out of the darkness. Fenn fumbled towards the source and grabbed the man lying next to him. Get off me! Coffee slapped Fenn's searching hand away. Why'd you have to do that? You hit me right in the face. No, I didn't. I hit Bram and the big bastard. With the gun, I mean. <coughs> Shit. Hurts to talk. 
The pair of guns must have whacked Coffee in the face when thrown back by the recoil. Fen let out a deep breath and chuckled, feeling giddy relief. Could have been a lot worse. At least it's over now. I guess. Definitely for Bram. What was that? A monster he had fought. Fen shook his head and let out an exasperated sigh. Of course it wasn't. And to think Coffee actually screamed, just like a little girl. He would make fun of him later for that. He was just a man of sorts. A large, muddy one, but still a man. The bigger question is, where did he come from? Also, where's this steam coming? A shift in the rubble. Was that his imagination? Another movement, a squelching one, as wet flesh pulled apart. The room was becoming humid, like a sauna, and Fen heard a soft hissing as more hot steam filled the air. Far more than a couple of blaster shots would emit. Coffee, is that you making that noise? Fen asked quietly, already knowing that Coffee lay to his left, not at the entrance to the corridor. Another shift, and this time he'd seen it. The pile on the other side of the room had moved. Fen shot backwards, kicking away with sudden panic as terror reflooded his veins. What the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck? Coffee stammered, pain to talk forgotten, as he copied Fen, retreating as fast from the reanimated corpse as he could. No one should be able to survive a blaster shot like that, not without armor. Fen had seen men and droids alike crumple in their path. Even a fully grown Balfarian could be downed in one go from the deadly force. And to stand after receiving two? Impossible. He had been wrong the first time. It's not a monster. It's worse. Fen's base instincts kicked into pure flight mode. He felt himself rise and turn, scrambling towards the open entrance, feet tripping over debris, arms pushing back up without hesitation as he hurtled for the door. He was vaguely aware of Coffee running next to him, overtaking, dashing outside into the freezing rain, not a glance back. Fen couldn't agree more. The deluge had never looked so appealing before. He heard rubble tumbling behind him, and Fen sensed the being's huge physique standing up. He followed Coffee and fell into the slushy slope of rubble outside, catching his arms on loose bricks. The curtain of rain drenched him instantly. His coat was still in the lobby, but no way in hell was he going back for that. Fen jumped back to his feet, ignoring the scrapes and bruises, slipping as he went downwards. He paused when he reached the black bitumen of the street, glistening with the rain's beatings. Was it following? It was foolish, but Fen couldn't help himself. He had to look back. He turned his head, heartbeat pounding in his ears, mouth dry. The huge, silhouetted figure stood slouched at the top of the slope, steam simmering from its chest. Through the darkness, through the mist and rain, Fen could tell the monster. No, a demon was staring at him. Could tell, not because of that strange sixth sense people get when studied from afar, but because of the demon's eyes. They were glowing. Two tiny rings of bright blue amongst the looming darkness. The irises shone, staring straight into Fen's own. Now it was his turn to scream, just like a little girl.